Hello, Star Wars and Moxie fans. Welcome to a different episode. <laughs> another episode. They're all different. Why don't we always say that? Of Darth Tuba, Star Wars and Moxie Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba. Another side show, slash hot toys, retrospective. And this one, for this retrospective, we are going still in the 2000, late 2009, 10, 11 frame. And we're going to be visiting um, the Tatooine area, both two areas of Tatooine, starting with Jabba's Palace. And um, for Jabba's Palace, and I might have included this in, as part of kind of a grand shelf talk video early on, but I haven't done a Sideshow retrospective. One of the things that Sideshow started doing was kind of creating like dioramas for um, your action figures. Now, they're fantastic. I got to tell you, they are definite art pieces. So I wanted to talk about this one first. This is uh, kind of a part of a dais or maybe entrance way for uh, characters to kind of stand in and it's really really quite phenomenal and it even included another character so this is sort of a sideshow character don't ask me his name i forget it's this little guy right here okay i don't remember seeing this little creature i'm gonna lean up here give you a little closer up look at him right i don't remember seeing this creature in the movie. All I remember is a scene from classic creatures, Return of the Jedi, or, or um, from Star Wars to Jedi, the making of the saga. Those are the two kind of specials, making of specials, that they produced. One came out right when the movie came out, and one came out, I think, a little bit later. One, the classic creatures, Return of the Jedi, was the one hosted by uh, Billy Dee Williams and Carrie Fisher. And it was an hour long special you saw on TV. And you know, back in the eighties, that was your only chance to kind of see these characters and these creatures again, other than seeing them in the movie. So it was kind of a cool thing. Of course it was all behind the scenes. A lot of the character creatures had their masks off and they were just actors. But there was a scene with Anthony Daniels in his C-3PO garb, kind of coming up close to this tongue and kind of touching it with his hand. Like, well, is that thing real? <laughs> like that kind of thing. So that's the only time I remember seeing it. I guess if you look closely enough in the video, you can, or in video, especially now with HD, you can probably find it. So this little creature comes with a little magnet back and you can kind of just place it up there and it kind of, you know, adds to the decor of this seemingly kind of broken off. Um, you can even see some up here, there's some, well, it might be hard to see from that angle, but there's like, like broken away, you know, rebar in the middle of it. So it's a cool little feature. I will say this, it is excruciatingly heavy. I mean, this thing weighs easily 20 pounds, okay? So if you were to make, if you were to pick up something like this, be aware that you're gonna need some space on your shelf and you're gonna need to have a very good shelf that could actually hold a lot of weight, okay? So be aware of that. Now, what could we possibly put over here. Well, I would say if you're gonna, if you're gonna have something, oh, Chris, my, my, I think my, my thing was given away. <gasps> Where is this? There it is. Oh, you got to put the Gamorrean guard in there, right? Okay, here's one of them. We'll kind of position him right here. Okay, don't fall forward. Don't fall forward. The Gamorrean guard. Now, ever since they created this one, I feel like they really haven't been able to. I haven't seen a, um, I haven't seen any version of the Gamorrean Guard that's been better than this one. Okay, now I don't know if Hot Toys has released one. Uh, I know now that there's a new type of Gamorrean Guard, the one you see in the Book of Boba Fett, a little bit in Mandalorian, that they're a little bit more buff, you know, but uh, and they're kind of more like gladiator-ish, if you will. All right, but I like the Return of the Jedi um, look. He has a little bit of articulation in his mouth. He had comes with the axe. And it's such a, it's so nice. I ended up getting them twice. Yes, I did. I think, I can't remember if one of them came with the day, with the display, or if I ended up actually getting two. But here's another one, pretty much the same kind, although this one comes with the, with the, with the bigger spear. And that is this dude. And I just feel like you, you need two. I mean, you gotta have two. Oh, gotta be careful though. That magnetic little creature sticking to the wall, if you give him even the slightest bit of, pressure he falls off so you gotta be careful with that but you know as a standstill piece it's great the both Gamorrean guards they have the they have a little bit of like the hard plastic they have some leather pleather like stuff and they have of course the fabric the fur faux fur if you will 
Um, and again, removable helmets if you really want them to be. Although they look a little weird from the back without their helmet, I will say, be honest with you. The helmet kind of blocks a little bit of the the um, the, the toy-esque part of the figure. So um, really, really great. I have mine on display over here next to Jabba. I put Luke there like he's getting ready to choke the guards, you know. This is his only seemingly dark side move. Now, I have another item that I want to share with you, okay? It's a, it's a great piece or set of pieces. It's kind of in the same vein of like a dis, like a diorama display. Um, uh, of which, but in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to switch things out because there's no way it's going to fit on my little stand here. So I have to move this guy back and put it there. So give me two seconds and I'll be ready. Okay. So uh, for this next one, um, this is also kind of in the same time frame. Although for this one, um, there's kind of a, it's one figure plus a little diorama plus an older figure. So I think you'll figure it out once you see who the figure is. And we'll start with this guy right here. Let me just get them all set up here. There he is. Uta tuta solo. There he is. Your favorite bounty, your favorite inept bounty hunter. Yes, it's Greedo. Greedo from A New Hope with his fancy orange and vest and green and yellow jumpsuit. Um, his, in this case, his Finger, his <laughs> very long fingertipped fingers and his really cool spiked hair, All right? It's a great figure, okay? Um, I honestly didn't just get him though for the figure. No, 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 au contraire, no. Here we have a chair. Now I think you might know where this might be going, but in case you don't, we'll just slowly now, I'm a little bit nervous about his leg. Like, I feel like I just broke something, but we'll just sit him right here, okay? Now, of course, if there is a chair, then you're gonna need a table. So we have this piece right here. Whoops, all right, everybody. Now, what's cool about this, I will say, um, I thought there were magnetic pieces here, but I don't, maybe I'm wrong. But it is li it's a light up table. Uh, it's got a little battery thing on the inside. I never light it up, which is funny how it's lit up. My only complaint about Sideshow, I mean, I, I have many complaints about Sideshow, but my only serious complaint, <laughs> you know, because most of them are just minor superficial things. But my my real issue with Sideshow is with all those electronics that they have batteries, you know, you put them on display, you put them in, I just wish they gave you the option of an eight, of a, like, a, like an electronic plug-in option. Um, and I mentioned this on previous channel. Let me just move this guy over a little bit and I'm gonna raise up my stand just a little bit here just to kind of, oh, maybe it won't raise, okay? Might be stuck. All right, we'll leave it there. Um, I, oh, hold on a second. Pardon me, it's an earthquake in Tatooine. Whoop. <laughs> Are we gonna open up today, guys? I have a piece of tape down here. I know why. This is a music stand. I actually use it for a gig and it needed to be, there we go. A little bit higher. There it is. It's probably going to sink down while I'm talking, but that's okay. So anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. There we go. So uh, I was collecting the Hawthorne Village kind of little diorama, mini diorama Star Wars Village. It's kind of like Department 56. And I loved that they had the option of battery power things so you can turn, flip on the light by just plugging and putting a battery in and turning the switch on or a little plug-in that you, they didn't come with the plug but you could get them in any kind of craft store and plug all of the lights in that way so you could turn them on with a flick of a switch or with plugging into an outlet or on a timer so very easily you could do that i wish 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 that a sideshow would do something like that would at least give you the option for some of these, even even figures. I mean, but they have light up lightsabers or C-3PO with the light up eyes. It would be so great if we had the option to plug in. Maybe that's too much extra hardware. Maybe the cost is too much. I don't know, but anyway. So this is, um, anyway, go back to this. It's a really nice table, but like that other diorama, it is extremely heavy. I think that's partially due just to keep it very stationary. Now, of course, it didn't just come with one chair. No, it came with another chair. And who, would we put in this other chair? Well, of course, your, your friend and mine, the scoundrel himself, 
Han Solo. Yes, I know right here he looks like he's about to do a kick line for the Rockettes, but no, that's just because I had him set up where his foot is up here, right? And then here's, now of course I have already shown this figure twice. I didn't realize I showed him twice. Part apologies for that. <laughs> I, I actually had a retrospective on Han Solo twice, but hey, whatever happens. And normally he has his uh, DL44 blaster, but um, for this particular one, I kind of used his, for him to be running around using the Stormtrooper blaster like he's on the Death Star, even, you know, because I kind of like that look for him too. So, but to do this scene, I gotta get, I gotta find his box and find his DL44 blaster and put it in there. But for now, you got this nice little, you know, who shot first? Did Han shoot first or did Greedo shoot first? My answer, who the heck cares? Okay, you wanna watch the one where Han shoots first? Go watch the one where Han shoots first. You wanna watch the one where Greedo shoots first? Go to watch the one where Greedo shoots first. Why are we arguing about this? George Lucas wanted to make it like whatever he wanted to make it. It's his show. Let it go, it's okay. I mean, some people just love to debate it. You know, he's a mercenary, he, he's a cold-blooded killer. Cold -blooded, cold -blooded killer. Really, is he, is he now? I mean, you know, he took out Greedo, yes, I understand that. And maybe he had no way to go. Maybe Greedo was uh, ready to, you know, maybe he just knew that Greedo was just about ready to, you know, I've been looking forward to this for a long time, like he was gonna do it, okay? But, or maybe Han thought that Greedo would tell him, all right, get up, so let's go outside so I can take care of it. Let's go to the back so I can take care of this, you know? And Han wasn't gonna give him the chance. All right, I get it, I get it, I understand. It's fine, I just, don't understand why people get so infuriated about it. But whatever. People get passionate. I get it. So so, it, so again, a great, a nice setup. Unlike this one, yes, these pieces are heavy, the chairs and the table, but this definitely fits in a smaller diorama setting. It's easier to fit on a shelf. It's easier to fit in one of the IKEA glass shelves. I think you'd have to adjust the characters a little bit this way, but or this way. But I think that would they would fit in there as well. I just have them in my bigger glass case over here. So really, really cool. Um, they hold up well. I don't really see, as I mentioned in previous videos, this is a sculpted Han. This is not the 3D sculpt, um, you know, scanning technology that later Han Solos will have. But uh, still, it's a great piece, great, great set of pieces. So loving it. And I look forward to sharing more with you. So thanks so much for watching. Check out all the other videos on my, my channel. Check my, check out my playlist. These will actually be in a sideshow retrospective playlist. So you can check out all, or actually just a sideshow playlist. So you can check out both retrospective and when new ones I arrive, I don't get too many new ones. That's why I'm kind of going back and like re-talking about the old ones. So, uh, thank you so much for watching guys. Check me out on Instagram and X. Start with Star Wars on Facebook. Facebook. Thank you to Red 5 Network for supporting and, you know, you know, putting out the channel out there and, and check out all the other Red 5 content. See what other great Star Wars podcasts and YouTube channels they have. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next video, may the Force and the toys be with you.